Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. This video is part of my Create With Me series where I give you a look into my creative process. I always think it's interesting and helpful to see how someone else creates. Well, the part of the creative process that I'm focusing on today is the decision process on what to buy or what to use when you're sitting down to make a card. I have a few tips that I hope are helpful for you and then we'll create a bunch of projects. My projects today all feature a pop-up vase design, and I was really determined to find several different ways to use it creatively to get more life out of the dies. That's part of the decision process that I go through. Now, all of these wonderful crafty companies that we love so much bring us a lot of different products that we can buy. We can't buy them all. We need to whittle down what we want to invest in. When I'm trying to decide what I'm going to buy or use, I want to make sure I can answer one of three questions. The first question is, can I think of five unique ways to use that particular product? So can I stretch it and get five unique projects out of it? This is actually what we'll focus mostly on today and the question I usually answer when I am considering buying a new product. The second question I try to answer is, do I have five different occasions that I can use a product for? You may notice in my videos, I rarely use like a wedding stamp set or a graduation die set because the occasions are very limited. I instead use my congratulations products that can fit many things because there are more occasions I can use it for. That gives you more value out of what you invest in. And the third question I try to answer when I'm considering buying a new product is do I have five products already on hand in my stash that I could use with this new product? That allows me to use it even more, expand its use. So those are the three main questions and I'll talk about them today, but I'll focus mostly on the five ways to use. So let's go through an example. A couple months ago, I was shopping on the Scrappy Tales website, which is a new stamp and die company. When I was there, I noticed this pop-up vase die set. I didn't buy it at the time, but I then went back and bought it later because I had some ideas th that I wanted to try. This die set allows you to create a large pop-up floral bouquet that will flatten and fit in an envelope. But I decided to think of five creative ways to use it, and I'll show you, I think, four of those today. I also thought I can think of five occasions to use a pop-up floral vase for. You could do it for birthday, wedding, uh, sympathy, it, really any occasion it would work. And I know I have at least five products on hand that I can use with this. I have a lot of flower bouquet or flower dyes. I have a lot of butterfly dyes, and they can all be used with this. And you'll see some of those today. Now this is an interactive die set, which usually can only be used one way, but for a lot of occasions and with a lot of products you already have. But I'm gonna stretch this and use it in five ways. That is my favorite part of the creative process, looking for different techniques or ways to use something. Now another product that I'm using today, and I've used in a video before, I'll link to it up in the top right here, is this other Scrappy Tales die set. Now when I purchased this one, I thought about five different occasions I could use it for. I thought some of the leaf dies would be great for a masculine card. I also thought that die there on the top left would be beautiful and white with pearls on it, maybe for a wedding card that I need to make very soon. So I knew I could think of five occasions that I need to make cards for that I could use this die set. But I also knew I could use it with a lot of products I already have, which is that third question. These are great leaf dies, basic leaf dies, that I could use with a lot of the floral dies I have. I noticed that a lot of my floral die sets don't come with many leaf dies, so this would be great to team up with it. Okay, the, another die set that I'm using today is this one from Paper Tray Ink. At first, I didn't think I was going to purchase it, but I came back and revisited it later because it has those large leaves in it, detailed daisy die, and it has a stem included. Also, the floral dies in here are very large and only have a couple layers to them. So I knew I could team them up with other things I have. I have the leaves that I just showed you from the Scrappy Tail set. Now I have these big flowers, and all we need to do is add some little flowers, which I know I have a lot of. 
I love florals and I use them a lot because I like to create with them and also they work for a lot of occasions. But really, you, if you have like a large floral die set like this one and a small floral die set like the next one I'll show you, you can really create a lot of cards with them. Now currently my favorite small flower die set is from the Greetery. I love the Greetery's products. I think they're so well designed and I really fall victim to each one of their releases, but this is one of the best investments I've made with them because there are a lot of little floral stems and little flowers to add to them. So you can use the little flowers by themselves or you can use them added to the stems. You can add, also add little pearls, sequins, or gems to the stems and use those as the flowers instead. So this is one of those die sets. I could think of five ways very quickly to use them creatively. And you'll see those added into our bouquets today. I also like that this die set cut multiple flowers at once to save time. Okay, so now that I told you a little bit about the different products I use today and why I decided to purchase them, let me show you the creative ways I use them, especially that 3D vase die set. I first started by die cutting a bunch of florals. Here you see the bigger ones from Paper Tray Ink. I went through my scrap drawer and just cut them from scraps I had. I'm a big fan of any dies that I can use with my scraps because I keep them all and I like to use them up as much as possible. I don't want those drawers to get too full. That's one of the ways I know to stop and use what I have more. If my drawers are getting a little too stuffed up, I use what I have and I use those scraps and I create a bunch of die cut cards like I'm doing today. Now the glue that I'm using to put all these layers together is Gina K Connect Liquid Adhesive. I've tried many and this is definitely my favorite. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of glue on something and then go and add more once the card is finished, but I found a little bit is all you need to put these pieces together. Now on each of these flowers, I'm adding a stem, which is from that paper tray ink die set. That's one of the reasons I purchased that particular die set. It has a stem that I can use on these flowers and flowers from other die sets that I have. Now these flower stems will stand up in our vase. So I will glue two stems together to make them stronger. I feel like that really helps it be more stable and it doesn't let it flop over when the recipient takes the vase out of the card. This point I decided I needed more stems and also more tall leaves. So I dug through my stash and I found the Altenew Snowdrops die set. This has some unique snowdrop flowers, but I'm not using those. I'm just using the stems and the leaves. So you can, you know, create a card and say you're doing something with balloons and you're creating with the balloons, but you decide you want some different shaped balloons. Go through your stash and see if you have some stars that go with it or some circle dies that you can turn into to balloons. That way you can add more to your cards as I'm adding more leaves to this bouquet. So at this point, I'm just creating a bunch of flowers, a bunch of leaves that I can have ready to make multiple pop-up vase cards today. And again, I did double up the stems, as you can see me doing here, just so they were stronger and so the flowers would stand up when the vase pops up. Let me show you a comparison. This one on the left here with the red flower, it stands up nice. Here's one that only has one stem thick, and you'll see it's kind of floppy, the orange flower, so I'll need to add one to that. Now let's look at the floral pop-up die set. You'll just need the two main dies on the bottom right. The others are just decorative. So let's start with the two main dies only. For the large die, you'll cut two pieces. Those are the white ones that you see. These have score lines that are created when you die cut them and you just fold along the score lines. Super easy to do. I do recommend a heavyweight cardstock for this. I think it just gives you better results, but any color would work for it. I wouldn't recommend a pattern paper because it would be a lot lighter weight. You could instead decorate with the decorative dies included in the set, and that helps to build up the stability. You also need four of this long rectangle here. Once again, the die creates the little score lines for you, and you have four that are all identical. So two of the larger, four of the smaller. This is what you need to make the pop-up die as it's intended, which is a large floral pop-up vase. Next, you'll need a strong adhesive. You could use a strong liquid adhesive, but I like a double-sided tape for this. And I'm putting a piece along the small flap on both of the large white pieces. So you can see there are four large flaps and then the small flap here at the top. 
I put the adhesive on that and then we can, can connect these two pieces together. So watch, I'll take the adhesive of a small flap and put it right up against the other end of the other white piece. And then the adhesive on the small flap of the other piece and attach it to the other. So basically you're just creating a circle here. This will be the vase of your card, which flattens nicely to go into an envelope. Now we need to attach all of these uh, four gray pieces inside. Again, you can do whatever color you want. And again, I'm putting double-sided adhesive on the small flaps. This time there are two small flaps on each piece. So you can see there's adhesive on those two outside flaps. Now I'm going to adhere this inside of our octagon. So I'll match up the crease of this gray piece with one of the creases, any of them, inside of our white octagon. So you can see I glued the flap to the inside of the white octagon. Now I'll take the other flap and adhere it up against the crease that is two away. So not the one right next to it, but the one after that. And you'll see I'm putting those creases together. And you'll see how it, see how it kind of forms a little diamond there between the white and the gray? We're going to build four of those inside, which allows this to pop up and form a three-dimensional structure when you take it out of the envelope. It's really easy to do once you've done it once or twice. Now here's our next one. I'm going to put it right up against the last flap. So you can see right into that crease there. Then we'll skip one crease and go to the next crease and adhere the other flap up against it. So I skipped one and then I adhere it right up against that next crease. And now you can look in and you'll see the two diamonds inside of it. It's really cool how this all comes together. And these again allow you to create a pop-up feature and a place for you to adhere your flowers. Once again, I'll come in with the third one, go right up against the last one, skip one of the creases and adhere it. And then do one more to fill in that last space. I promise you once you're doing it and you have it in your hands, it's very easy to put together. And this is all from that one die set. And remember, there are additional pieces in that die set to decorate the side walls of this, although I left mine plain for most of my examples. Once you have it all assembled, you really wanna press it back and forth a few times. Anytime you have a pop-up or interactive card, I think it's good to do that. It allows it to pop up more freely and it just makes the card come together better. So there you can see the large vase. And all we have to do now is add our flowers. Now I want to be sure that once I add my flowers in, that this will still be able to flatten and fit in a five by seven envelope. So I have a five by seven envelope here. I'll link to the ones I like below in my YouTube description. And I will make sure that when I glue these flowers inside, they don't stick out of that envelope area. So I'll start with one of my bigger flowers, my tallest flower first. So this will be kind of a guideline for me. I put strong liquid adhesive on it, Gina K Connect, and I added it to one of those pop-up diamonds on the inside. Now I always add parallel to that now, which you'll see me do. That way it can always flatten nicely and go in the envelope. And I constantly test that, but it's really easy to do. So now I know that's my highest flower because it'll still fit in the envelope and I can add whatever I want around this. You could add butterflies to it. You could add like Easter eggs in this with a bunny for Easter. You could add leaves in this in the fall, whatever you want. Even balloons would be fun, but I'm always a sucker for flowers. So I am adding a lot of those. And each time I make sure that I can flatten it, it'll still fit in that five by seven area of the envelope behind it. So I, every time I'm gluing those flowers parallel. So see how when it's standing up, the orange and the white are parallel. This pink is parallel. You can glue along any of those diamond walls that we added on the inside, as long as it flattens nicely, and the front and the back of the vase. So at the beginning of this video, I told you that I decided to purchase this die set because I could think of five creative ways to use it. But before I use it for those creative ways, I use it how it's originally intended, which you see me doing here, to make this large pop-up vase. That helps me to get familiar with the product, and while I'm using it, I can come up with even more ways to use it creatively. So if you get a die set and you really want to stretch it, or a stamp set and you really want to use it in a unique way, use it in something pretty basic first to get your creativity going, and then you can build up to more creative ideas. Now for me, that's the fun part of the creative process, thinking of ways to use it creatively. But for you, it might be a thinking of creative occasions to use it for. 
So maybe you considered this die set and you thought, oh, I could use it for a wedding card, a sympathy card for my Aunt Jane, a birthday card for my sister. That can be a way to be more creative too. Or you can think of different products you have to go with it. So you could think, I have some birthday balloons that could come out of this. I have some pine uh, little boughs and ornaments that could come out of this. And I have some flowers. Just think of multiple ways you can use this, answering one of the three questions I showed you earlier in this video. Okay, so now I've put a bunch of flowers in there, and you can see they're all facing in the same direction. If you want some facing backwards too, you can. I don't really care what the back looks like. I really only care about the front. But you could definitely put more on the back if you want to. Now I'm coming in with some leaves and just gluing them behind some of the flowers so there's some greenery sticking out. So I start with the biggest flowers first and then start working my way down to the leaves and the smaller flowers. I'm pretty impatient, so I use my liquid adhesive and push it there and hope it stays put for a while. But you could also use some self-closing tweezers to hold something in place while you're gluing it and while it dries, which you'll see me do later. I originally thought I would add some smaller flowers into this, but I decided I didn't need it. It was full enough with the larger ones. But I needed something on the front of the vase. So I dug through my stash and I found this greetery put a bow on it stamp set. I actually bought this stamp set to save to use for the holidays. I thought it would look nice on the bottom of a wreath. But look how great it is on the front of my vase. When I saw this vase in the shopping uh, online, I remembered this bow stamp and die set and I thought it would go well together. So that's answering that question. Do I have five products on hand that I can use with the vase? This is one of them. I also wanted to add a word die along the bottom of that bow. So I dug through my stash and I found this much older Simon Says Stamp, Hey Love Die. I really like to incorporate older sentiments that I have on hand with newer products. It allows me to get more use out of those products I haven't used in a while, such as this word die. And then finally, I thought it'd be fun to add a butterfly inside of that bouquet. I'm a big fan of butterflies and I liked these from Scrappy Tails because they have the solid butterfly and then the detail you can layer on it. Be great for some stained glass effects or with glitter. But for today, I just took one of the butterflies and added it right into our floral bouquet right there at the top. Now you can see the bouquet flattens nicely to go inside a five by seven envelope, but when you take it out, it pops up and you have this dimensional vase with flowers that stands nicely on display. I also added some yellow pearls here and there at the center of the flowers, but not too many. Now, if I were to give this to someone, you, I could either write a sentiment on the back of the vase or put this inside of a plain white card where I write my sentiment, or I could just tuck something inside like a little note that they could take out. So there are a few different options on how to add your personal sentiment. But for me, this was so much fun to create. You can see I added some white baby's breath from the Scrappy Tails die set in there. But other than that, I just use those large flowers and leaf dies. And the fun thing about this is the recipient will get an envelope and think a traditional card is inside, but instead it's a fun pop-up vase. All right, let's do another version of this, but this is slightly smaller than the last one. I think this might be my favorite of the sizes and it just takes a small altering. So once again, I have the two larger rectangle pieces from the Scrappy Tails pop-up die set, and I'm folding along the score lines. If you find the score lines don't create enough crease because your cardstock is too thick, you can use your scoreboard, as I'm doing here, to reinforce those score lines. However, this time, I'm cutting off two of the large flaps. So we'll only end up with two large flaps and one small flap, as you can see here and I'm doing that to only one of the pieces. This will allow me to create a slightly smaller vase. Once again, I'm putting double-sided adhesive along the two smallest flaps of these pieces, and now we can connect these. So once we glue these together, instead of having a large octagon like we did last time, we'll have a smaller hexagon. I'll still use a five by seven envelope, but I actually found this was easier to kind of fill with flowers, and it flattens quite nicely. It's up to you which way you use it, and I'll show you an even smaller version and a version to put inside of a card a little bit later in this video. Okay, so now I have one of the gray rectangle pieces like we did before. I didn't alter it in any way. 
I put adhesive on both of the flaps, and I even use some liquid adhesive to make sure it stays put. Once again, I'll put it in again up against one of the creases, and then I'll skip a crease of the hexagon and put it right up against one of the other creases of the hexagon. So you can see how it looks there. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's very easy. This time we're only adding two pieces on the inside. Last time we added four on the inside, this time only two. So now we have one in here. Now I'll take the other one, put adhesive on those two small flaps. Again, I'm putting li liquid adhesive on there just to make sure it stays put, but you really don't have to. This time I'm flipping my vase over from what I had before and putting the piece in in the same way. So I connect up against one of the creases, then I skip a crease of the hexagon and glue this flap up against the other crease. So when you look through it, check out what you have. You have these two pieces glued in there up against each other. It looks complicated, but I promise it's really easy to do. And this is definitely my favorite of the different vase designs. If you are looking for a vase design that fits into a regular A2 envelope, that will be my next option. So once again, I have a five by seven envelope here that I'm using as a guideline to make sure that when the card is flattened, that everything will fit in the envelope. So as I mentioned, when I purchased this pop-up vase die set, I tried to think of five creative ways to use it. And this is the first where I change up that pop-up die set. So I make a slightly smaller vase. Now, what I do wish I would have shown here is how to do like balloons coming out of this or maybe a critter popping out of it. But I was really into the flower zone. And so all of my examples have flowers coming out, but you could change it up to be whatever you want. Even a bunch of butterflies coming out would be fun. Okay, so here you see me adhering a bunch of different flowers in here. Again, using lots of flower stems and all making sure they face the same way so that when I press it and flatten it down, it flattens nicely. After I filled the vase, I added another one of the greedery bow die cuts to the front. And this time for a sentiment, I used the Altenew Essential Sentiment Strip die set, which I've used many times in videos. I thought that would look nice stretched across the bottom of the bow. I also need lots of thank you cards, so I thought it would be perfect for this. And again, I'm stretching these dies to use for more than one theme. So we have just a basic love theme earlier. This is a thank you, and I'll do other ones later on. And when I'm done, you can see it flattens nicely and it'll fit into the five by seven envelope. And then when you take it out, it easily pops up to be the vase that stands nicely on its own. I think that this one, I'm going to write a little personal message on a small rectangle die cut and glue it in there, kind of like the little message card that people have sticking out of flower bouquets. So this vase is a bit smaller than our last example, but I was able to use those interactive dies creatively, make a small alteration to it, and get a new use from them. Okay, now let's do an example of a small vase. So we're gonna make bigger changes to the vase so that this will fit into a regular A2 envelope. All right, now this one is much smaller, but it comes together really quickly and very easily. So I only cut one large rectangle die cut this time, and I am just going to fold it and glue it shut so we have a square. So the vase will be a simple square for this. I then only need one of the smaller rectangle die cuts. And remember how we put adhesive on both of the small flaps? I'm gonna alter this one though. Watch where I cut it. I cut one of the bigger flaps to be smaller. So I end up with one big flap with two small flaps on the end. So I froze it there. I'll cut right here, and then I'll put adhesive on those two smaller flaps. This will go in the inside and allow for more area to glue your stems on. You could skip this piece, but it really does allow you to add more flowers to the inside. So I just slide this right down the middle of the square vase, and then just press it to make sure it's stuck there, and then work the vase to make sure it flattens nicely, so that we'll be able to flatten it to put inside of the envelope. This time I knew I needed some smaller flower elements because it's a smaller vase. So I'm using that Greetery Wildflower die set Love how this cuts multiple little flowers at once, so you can quickly arrange these little sprigs to put inside of your vase. I thought these smaller elements would go nice with maybe one or two larger elements, 
but again, I want to make sure it'll still fit in my envelope. This is an A2 envelope, so it fits a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. I put my larger elements in place first, the larger flowers, to make sure that it'll still fit in the envelope. Now I'm adding the smaller ones. And notice I'm using my self-closing tweezers to hold those in place as they dry for a few minutes. That's helpful so you can keep creating and you don't have to wait for it to dry. So now I'm just adding these in until I feel like it's full enough, but is still able to fit in the envelope. So at this point, I'm feeling really good about my purchase of this interactive floral die set because I was able to create several different floral bouquets of different sizes using it. And next I'll use it inside of a card. And I know I can go back and have other things pop out of it too. So to finish this off, I added a few pearls and then also the greetery bow and a Birch Press Hello Sugar Script die. It's one that I reach for quite a bit. So this will flatten and fit into a four and a quarter by five and a half inch envelope, but it stands nicely on its own. And this time I'll just write a tiny little message on the back here. I plan to make a bunch of these for teachers where it has like a little apple sticking out, a pencil, a pen, a ruler, different little die cuts sticking out of it with a best, best teacher sentiment on the front of it. I thought that would be fun and something they can keep sitting on their desk. Okay, now for the biggest stretch of that floral vase die set, I'm making a pop-up flower vase inside of a five by seven card and it worked really well. I'm first assembling a square vase like we did on the last example, the small vase example. So I took one of the rectangle dies and glued the small flap right around to the large flap, which just creates a square vase. I will glue this into my card. But first I have the smaller rectangle piece. Remember how I cut it a little bit short? So it was a large flap with two smaller flaps on the end. I put an adhesive on those two smaller flaps and then I will slide this into our square vase. This is exactly like we did on the last example. The only difference, this time I will glue that vase into the five by seven card. You could do a smaller card, but I thought I could add more flowers if I made the bigger card. And five by seven is really my jam right now. I'm really enjoying that larger size. So now on that square vase, I'm putting adhesive on two sides next to each other so that I can remove the release paper from those two sides and slide it right into the crease of our card. So you can see those two sides are next to each other. And I just place the crease between those two sides with the adhesive into the crease of our note card. So now I just place that right in there, close the card on it and check that out. We have a pop-up vase right inside of the crease of our card. It's the same vase that we did on our last card, just stuck inside of a card this time. Now we can add any flowers and leaves that we want. I'll do the same process I did before where all the flowers are facing forward towards me. But the nice thing is, is I can glue some things to the back of the card. Like this little vine here, I can glue to inside of the card. So it makes my flower vase wide. It's really easy to add the flowers inside of this because we know our boundaries, because the card size is our boundary. We want this to fit in an envelope. Now for this, I dug through my stash again, looked at some more greetery stamp sets because I really like those. And I've loved this written in ribbon stamp set and coordinating die set. I think this was on my favorites list this year. I've used it before, but it has some great basic sentiments on it. It's a layering stamp set that gives you a three-dimensional look and the coordinating dies. So I did Just For You and Hello with blue ink. And then I did the second layer with a slightly darker blue ink really gives a cool result. And then I use the coordinating die to cut it out. One of these will go on the front of my card and one will go on the inside. On the back of Just For You, I put adhesive on the back left only and glued that to the front of the vase so that the Just For You sentiment pops up with the vase as you open the card. There you can see all the flowers I added to the inside. Again, I just glued them all facing to me or to the inside of the card. On the front, I did this basic flower with the hello sentiment. I wanted to keep it simple because the heart of this card is on the inside. When you open it, that vase pops open and so does all of the flowers. This is such a fun surprise. And again, I think it would look really good with balloons coming out or maybe some pine branches with ornaments at Christmas time. A lot of different ways you can use it. 
If you wanted this card to be smaller, you could create the square vase and then cut it in half so that your vase isn't as tall and then you would have more room for the flowers. But by using a bigger note card, I have more room for flowers and room to put a little personal sentiment in the bottom right corner. This was definitely the most fun to put together because I was really stretching that interactive die set to do something new. Okay, now before we go, I wanted to show you some of the cards I'll be doing in a video coming very soon. They also use an interactive die set from Scrappy Tales. It's a birdhouse die set. I'll link to it below. The reason I share it here is it's from the same company and it's the same idea of taking one interactive die set and using it many ways creatively. I think I did six or seven different versions. So it's this pop-up slimline birdhouse but I change it up to make it also a smaller A2 pop-up birdhouse. I also changed it so it would be an A7 pop-up birdhouse, and then I did regular folded birdhouse cards too. It's really about taking what you have and stretching it. I also used it with some of the flower dies that you saw me use today, and also with some uh, little birds, which you've seen me use in videos before. So it's answering that question of, do I have five products on hand I can use with a new product before I decide to purchase it? Again, I'll link to these birdhouse dies below too. I was just excited to see that Scrappy Tails has these innovative die sets and it's a new company and has a young female owner, which is something that really makes me happy because I love seeing younger generations getting into card making. It's such a great hobby to have. If you are interested in any of the products that I have here, they are linked below in my YouTube description. Also, I really hope that kind of looking into how I decide to buy or use something was helpful to you. It helps to kind of really think about things before we just hit that buy it now button. And if you want to learn some more techniques, you can check these videos out in the center. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon.